Surrounded by the deep blue waters of the Mediterranean Sea south of Sicily, the Maltese islands Malta, Gozo and Comino have a fascinating heritage. Being close to Tunisia, there is a distinct North African influence. The Maltese language is derived from Arabic mixed with, well, Italian. The country is also fiercely proud of the legendary Knights of Malta who fought off the Turks and launched the Crusades. Under the scorching sunshine, Malta's palm tree fringed landscape is dotted with picturesque hilltop towns, peaceful seaports, colourful old fishing villages and natural attractions. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated tourist attractions in Malta and just wait till you see what's at number 2, something you may never even have thought of. So make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So let's cut to the chase. First off at number 10, Golden Bay Beach, Island of Malta. With its sheltered sandy shores tucked away behind a mountainous coastline and sloping cliffs, Golden Bay, what a name, in northwest Malta is one of the island's prettiest beaches. This picturesque and well-maintained beach is found next to a luxurious five-star hotel. What else? The Radisson Blue Resort and Spa Malta Golden Sands, which has four restaurants, a swimming pool and fitness centre, and no doubt great views. Golden Bay Beach is easily accessible by car or bus. The bus stop is only a five-minute walk away from the beach. Unlike other beaches in Malta, Golden Bay Beach is far away from street traffic, which makes it a perfect get-away-from-it-all seaside escape. The beach has an extremely wide shoreline with soft golden sands. Well, I guess it would. The clean, calm waters are safe for swimming. Many visitors spend the day here sunbathing while listening to the soothing sound of waves lapping against the shore. Lounge chairs and beach umbrellas are available for rent and the site has well-maintained facilities including public toilets and changing rooms. There are also cafes and restaurants with terraces overlooking the shore and the gently crashing waves. At 9, breathtaking views at Dingley Cliffs, island of Malta. Those who appreciate awe-inspiring coastal scenery should take a short drive or bus ride from the Blue Grotto in Weed Izuriek to the Dingley Cliffs. The appeal and the drawback of this location is its remoteness. The sheer 250-metre Dingley Cliffs plunge dramatically into the Mediterranean Sea and the sloping hillsides are fertile land used by small farms. The highlight of Dingley Cliffs is the viewpoint that offers stunning seaside panoramas. But don't get too close to the edge. Besides a short walking trail, there is nothing at Dingley Cliffs except a tiny hilltop chapel closed to the public which is devoted to St Mary Magdalena. Tips for tourists. Keep in mind that there are no restrooms or cafes. Sometimes tourists will find a pop-up souvenir and refreshment stand. Dingley Cliffs does not have a visible bus stop ask the bus driver where to get out. And buses run infrequently, but the sensational photo ops make it worth the trek. But you might have to wait for a bus. Next up, it's number 8. The Blue Grotto, Island of Malta. The breathtaking coastal vistas on the approach to the Blue Grotto on a winding cliffside road high above the Mediterranean Sea provide an exciting introduction to this spectacular nature site. The water shines a brilliant blue in the sun, in sharp contrast to the limestone bluffs and caves. The scenery has a serene, mesmerizing quality. It explains why, according to mythology, the Blue Grotto was home to the sirens, or sea nymphs to you and me, who captivated sailors with their charms. Tourists can take a guided boat tour in one of the brightly painted Maltese fishing boats called Lizus. Boats leave frequently year-round when the sea is calm, the 20-minute joyride speeds through the sea past six caves, including the Blue Grotto, a 30-metre high cave with a luminous pool of cobalt-hued waters. Tip for tourists. The best time to visit is early in the day, ideally before 2pm, when the sunlight best illuminates the water. The village of Wid is Zuriek, just one kilometre away from the Blue Grotto, has many souvenir stores, ice cream shops and cafes, as well as cliffside restaurants with marvellous views. Tourists will enjoy a meal at one of the restaurant terraces overlooking the gorgeous expanse of Azure Sea. Now where's my beer? 
At seven, Blue Lagoon, island of Comino, nature's perfect swimming pool. With an almost tropical quality, the Blue Lagoon is a mesmerizing scene of crystal clear turquoise waters lapping over a white sand seabed. This expansive lagoon gives the impression of being a giant swimming pool because the water is temperate, there are no waves, and the shallow end is safe enough for children. Wonderful for swimming, splashing around, or just floating on inflatable tubes like I probably would be, the core of the lagoon is roped off to boats. The lagoon is equivalent in length to several Olympic-sized swimming pools. Quite big then. Good swimmers can cross to the cove and tiny beach on the other side. The lagoon has a small beach with umbrellas and lounge chairs available for rent. The other option is sunbathing on the scorching hot rocky hillside. At least, tourists can count on refreshment stands set up around the lagoon. From May through October, travellers can stay at the Camino Hotel, the only hotel on the island, really, to appreciate the Blue Lagoon without the other tourists and enjoy a peaceful vacation. Things to do on Comino Island include nature walks, hiking and water sports such as snorkeling and scuba diving. Tips for tourists During high season, this beach is often crowded by 10.30am, so it is best to, well, arrive early. The lagoon is less crowded after 4pm, however the returning ferries stop running around 6pm, so you gotta be quick. The ferry ride from Megar on the island of Gozo takes about 15 minutes to arrive at the Blue Lagoon on the island of Comino. From the island of Malta, departing from the port of Martha or Kirkoa, the ferry ride to the Blue Lagoon takes about, well, 30 minutes. And next up, at number 6, the prehistoric Tarxian Temples, Island of Malta. The UNESCO-listed Tarxian Temples is the largest and best-preserved prehistoric cult site in Malta, consisting of four megalithic structures. Excavated in 1914, the site covers an area of 5,400 square meters and displays the artistic achievements of Malta's mysterious prehistoric culture during the Temple period, late Neolithic period between 3,600 BC and 2,500 BC. Stone reliefs and sculptures that were found here are represented on the site by excellent reproductions. The originals are displayed in the National Museum of Archaeology in Valletta. The stone walls of the four adjoining temples are decorated with surprisingly intricate spiral patterns and animal figures. The decorative South Temple contains the largest collection of art, including reliefs that depict goats, pigs, bulls and a ram. Random? There is also a unique statue depicting a fertility goddess with robust legs. Robust legs? Small dainty feet? And, well, a pleated skirt. That's alright then. The East Temple is made of sturdy slab walls with recognizable oracle holes. The Central Temple features a six-apse architectural plan and has an arched roof that reveals technically advanced construction techniques. Tip for tourists. The Toxian Temple's archaeological site is within easy walking distance of Harald Seflieni Hypogeum. Both sites could easily be visited on the same day. Whatever that is. Oh, next up at 5, Hal Safliene Hypogeum, island of Malta, a Neolithic cult site. Ah, visitors are awed by the beguiling world of the prehistoric era at this amazing archaeological site. Designated on the UNESCO World Heritage List, Hal Safliene Hypogeum was an underground cemetery during the Neolithic era. At this complex of catacombs, prehistoric man performed religious burial rituals and consulted oracles. Not the internet. Carved from limestone using rock tools, the interconnected superimposed chambers include passages and stairways on three levels. The lowest level is the chamber known as the Holy of Holies, which is over 10 meters below the entrance to the first level at the top. The site is remarkable for how old it is, 4000 BC to 1500 BC, and for the excellent state of preservation, complete with beautiful carvings and paintings in red ochre. It is also fascinating the way structural elements of Hal Sefliani Hypogeum mirror the architecture of contemporaneous prehistoric era megalithic sites such as the Tarxian temples. Hal Sefliani Hypogeum has provided archaeologists and scholars with intriguing clues about the Neolithic mindset and culture. The complex stands as a rare testimony to a vanished civilization. 
Some of the artifacts found in Hal Sefliani Hypogeum are now displayed at the National Museum of Archaeology in Valletta, including unique clay sculptures, stone figures of birds, and the Sleeping Lady, a rare prehistoric object that depicts a woman lying on a couch. Well, as you do. Tip for tourists. Book ahead. The site is open to the public for 50-minute guided tours. It is recommended to reserve tickets online in advance for a specific day and time. For reasons of conservation, Hal Sefliani Hypogeum has a limit of 10 visitors every hour. Just 10. Now at number 4, historical attractions in Rabat, island of Malta. Just outside the Medina ramparts is the neighbouring town of Rabat. Tourists can see both cities in the same day. Medina and Rabat are sometimes considered to be one unified urban area. In Maltese, the word Rabat means suburb. Rabat is less touristy and more modern than Medina, but there are noteworthy historical attractions. One of the hidden gems is the Casa Bernard, a grand 16th century house that belongs to a noble Maltese family of French origins. Although the Casa Bernard is still a private residence, it is open to the public for guided tours. The house is decorated with antique furniture, masterpieces of painting and noteworthy objets d'art. The Doms Romana Museum provides a glimpse of everyday life during the ancient Roman era with exhibits about fashion, entertainment and cuisine. The museum stands on the ruins of a Roman aristocratic townhouse and contains some of the finest 1st century BC Roman mosaics in the world. Also on display are artifacts uncovered at the site and antiquities found elsewhere on the island of Malta. A key landmark tied to Malta's Christian heritage, the 17th century parish church of St Paul's, stands above St Paul's Grotto, where it is said that St Paul found refuge during his stay in Malta. Next to the church, the Wigner Court Museum displays an extensive collection of ancient Roman artefacts, as well as impressive paintings by Mattia Preti and other esteemed European artists. Dating back to the 15th and 16th centuries, St Dominic's Convent is an important pilgrimage destination because it contains a marble statue of the Virgin Mary that is considered miraculous. The convent was rebuilt in the early 17th century and has a lovely courtyard garden. And now at number 3, the medieval hilltop town of Medina, island of Malta. Medina offers an escape to a fairy tale city. Listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, this enchanting medieval hilltop town is steeped in history. Tourists must pass through the dramatic main gate to enter the city, giving the impression of walking back in time. Within the city's immense ancient ramparts is a delightful world of car-free streets and beautiful old sandstone buildings. High on the list of top attractions in Medina is St. Paul's Cathedral, a glorious Baroque building designed by the Maltese architect Lorenzo Gaffa. The lavishly decorated sanctuary features a magnificent dome, marble columns, gilded details and gorgeous ceiling paintings. The cathedral possesses a precious 12th century icon of the Madonna and renowned works of art by celebrated Maltese painter Mattia Preti. To get a sense of Medina's former glory, tourists should visit the historic palaces. And next up, at number 2, the idyllic island of Gozo. The island of Gozo is the most idyllic destination of the Maltese islands. With its quiet towns and pristine beaches, this little island is the perfect place to enjoy a relaxing vacation for several days or even a week-long stay. Although Gozo is less developed than Malta, the island has plenty of cultural attractions. A fortified medieval city, Victoria, a bustling seaside resort, Marcel Fawn, and the most important archaeological site of the Maltese islands, Gantia Temples, dating back to around 3500 BC. Visitors enjoy the island's countryside, which offers a delightful retreat from the modern world. A patchwork of small farms cover the island's valleys and rolling hills. Traditional villages perch above the landscape, while the hillsides lead down to protected beaches and quaint old fishing ports. Even the tiniest towns have grandiose baroque churches. A favourite beach is at Ramla Bay, with a wide sandy shore and gentle waters that are safe for swimming. 
This well-equipped beach welcomes visitors with excellent facilities. Lounge chair and umbrella rentals, showers, restrooms, changing areas and snack bars. The island of Gozo is a short ferry ride from Sirkewa on the island of Malta. And finally, drum roll please for number one, Valletta, Malta's elegant capital. A strategically important seaport, Valletta is the elegant capital of the Republic of Malta. Very grandiose. The entire city is testimony to the grandeur of the Knights of Malta, the European noblemen who were granted the Maltese islands by the King of Spain in 1530. The Knights created a capital worthy of their aristocratic stature, on par with other great European capitals. Valletta's regular grid plan and orderly public squares reveal the Knights' logical 16th century urban planning. Tourists can easily navigate this small city that is bounded by two harbours, the Grand Harbour and Marsamset Harbour. The heart of the city is St. John's Coe Cathedral, a 16th century church built by the different orders of the Knights, hailing from various countries such as France, Spain and Italy. Visitors are surprised by the lavish interior with its opulent gilded decor. Nearby is the immense Grandmaster's Palace, once the residence of the Knights of Malta. This palace boasts splendid paintings as well as an armory that tell the story of the Knights' military victories. For tourists who appreciate culture and historic monuments, Valletta is one of the best places to visit on the Maltese islands. Malta's most modernized city, Valletta, is packed with tourist attractions and is a convenient location for travelers who would like to explore the island of Malta without a car. The island has an efficient bus system with Valletta at its hub. And there you have the top 10 rated tourist attractions in Malta. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. That's all for now, until next time.